Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.1 beta five has been out for a few days along with public beta two, but there's even more features to talk about since the iOS 18.1 beta five is out. What's new video. We'll talk about the features overall experience, not only on 18.1, but iOS 18 that released a couple weeks ago. We'll talk about what to expect next and the experience on both versions based off what you had to say on the YouTube community poll. At the time of this video, there's over 25,000 votes and 344 comments. We'll take a look at some of your comments toward the end of the video, but first let's talk about a couple releases that Apple made this week. This past week, Apple released an update to Apple music classical, where they added thousands of different booklets for this along with sections within the library. So if we go back to the app store here, You'll see if we swipe back, it says this update adds album booklets for thousands of albums and recently added section to library. So if you use Apple music classical, that's been updated. Also, if you have a new watch and you're using sleep apnea and that's enabled, however, I still don't have it on iOS 18.1 within the health app. Many people have said that it's under respiratory. I just don't see it at all unless they may be updated at some point, but I still don't see it. However, it's just gotten approval in Canada. So that feature should be rolling out soon there. Apple doesn't have a time frame on this, but we're waiting for them to update it. As far as new features, if we go into the notes app, there's actually an icon here for Apple intelligence. So maybe we say this is a new note, press the button, and then you have your proofread or rewrite tools to make it friendly, professional, or concise. So these are all coming with Apple intelligence. They've just made it a little bit easier with an Apple intelligence button, instead of having to find writing tools after you select something. So before this, you would select all, then go in and go to your writing tools. It brings up the same prompt. Now you just have a quick prompt for it. If we go into shortcuts, there's an update there under Apple pay. We have pay Apple card balance, and then you can see the amount here. So if you want to run that amount, you can do the current monthly balance, minimum payment, other amount, or ask each time or have a shortcut input. So if you use shortcuts, that's been updated. If we go into the calendar app, this has been updated with a nice haptic feedback update. If we swipe from day to day, you can actually feel haptic feedback. This isn't here on the previous beta or iOS 18. So as you swipe through, it just gives some haptic feedback to let you know that you've gone from day to day. Also, if we go into Shazam, this has been updated with haptics as well. So if we go into settings first under settings, if we go to accessibility and if we scroll down to music haptics and we turn this on, it's now available in Shazam. So if you want to use that within Shazam, you can, if we go into a song and maybe play the song, you'll see, we have an Apple music haptics button here. So you can see it here where we have haptics enabled. So if you want that in Shazam, it's available there now as well. Now, if you've been using iOS 18.1 betas and you also use Mac OS 15.1 betas with the new iPhone mirroring option, you can actually use these together now and use drag and drop between them. This was a feature promised early on that's now available in this beta, and it allows you to drag a file from your iPhone to your Mac or from your Mac back to your iPhone. So I'll explore this more in the future, but this is now available along with iPhone mirror. Now, as far as releases this week, well, there were quite a few different ones. One I already mentioned was AirPods Pro 2 firmware, bringing it up to 7A305. So if we're connected here, we go into our settings. We'll go back here and scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll see the latest update here to 7A305. Apple says basically that it's just bug fixes and improvements, and it does seem to fix connectivity issues, and it doesn't degrade in bitrate as I'm editing. It seems to be a little bit better. So it's definitely an improvement for me. I'm not sure if it is for everyone else as I haven't heard a ton of feedback, but hopefully it resolves a bunch of issues. Issues. I would love to see Apple update that with more information though. We also have a new iTunes security update for windows if you're using that. And if you're using older versions of iOS or maybe wanting to downgrade, Apple stopped signing iOS 17.6.1. That means you can no longer downgrade to that version, but you still can downgrade to iOS 17.7. Apple got rid of an update this week that they previously released. They pulled HomePod OS 18.1 beta two, as it seemed to be bricking some devices. So if you installed that and it's not working, well, that's probably why. Thankfully, I haven't seen that myself, but it did cause some issue on HomePods. Apple still has not yet released an update for the M4 iPad Pro yet, and iOS 18 or iPad OS 18 is not available on the Pro M4s. That's very odd a couple weeks out after the public release. However, that means we'll probably get iOS 18.0.1 very soon. And Mac rumors is actually showing that on their site. They're seeing that in analytics. And so I would expect it very, very soon. Maybe we'll see it as, as soon as maybe Monday or Tuesday at this point. So I would think maybe 
the 30th or the 1st of October. And of course we'll have an iOS 18.1 beta as well, or maybe the RC with iOS 18.1 RC or iOS 18.1 beta six. We don't really know hundred percent, but either way, I think Apple wants to get Apple intelligence done as fast as possible since it was advertised as coming with the latest phones with the camera capture and everything else. So anyone that was wanting to use that, it works okay, but it's something that they definitely need to update. Now, if you have one of the latest iPhones with the camera control, button, there's actually some options I wanted to let you know about if you weren't already. I missed it in one of my videos. And if you go into settings and accessibility, scroll down to camera control, you actually have the option to turn it off here, just like you do in the other settings, but you can change the control gesture to a light press. I would recommend this as it seems to fix the issue when you're pressing it a little bit, you can actually see it light up here and then the light press force, you can make it even lighter than that if you want. So if you want it to be lighter, firmer or default, you can change that. And then again, double light press speed. So if you want to slow it down, you can do that as well. So when you double light press, it actually does something a little bit differently. So those are some options I wanted to make you aware about. Now, as far as iOS 18 and the overall experience, well, it seems to be okay for some people, but it's still a bit of a mess for an early release. Some people have said it's the worst release since iOS 11. I would say it's much better than iOS 17 in my experience, but that's not the same for everyone. For example, if you're on iOS 18 on the iPhone 16, people are seeing the camera actually crash. I'm seeing an odd bug when maybe I have macro enabled and I go to record video. Maybe I'll get close in here. Let's see if I can get it to do it back out a little bit. Maybe we'll go to two X go back out. It jumps around and then sometimes it freezes. So I'll zoom in, jump back out. It'll go back into macro and sometimes it will lock up even on 18.1. So there's definitely some odd bugs there. Many people report that music is stuttering for them or just pausing altogether. However, many people say that the interface is smoother, but can be laggy on some older devices. So sometimes from time to time going through different apps on older devices seem to slow down. Now it does seem to be an issue typically on the iPhone 10 R 10 S and 10 S max more so than the others, but it's still an issue on older phones. Some phones are also still optimizing in battery settings. So if we go into settings, we'll take a closer look at battery in a little bit, but within battery, even after installing after well, a couple weeks, it's still optimizing here. And there's also many complaints about the new way, the photos app and control center work. I personally just turned the control center back to one page. I wanted it to be even less than that. So I customize it the way I want, but other people don't want it that way. And of course we can reset it as well with the new button with beta five. Now, specifically the iOS 18.1 beta five experience so far, is okay. Some people actually say it's worse than the previous beta. I find it to be much better. I get better battery life. I get better connectivity and just the overall experience is better. However, the people having issues are having major issues with reboots, bugs, and crashes all over. Thankfully, I haven't seen any of that on my device, but many people are seeing this. It seems. Like I mentioned, battery seems to be better, but there is a bug where icons disappear. You can see that on my iPad here. In fact, it's missing right here. So the books icon just isn't there. If we go into books, we can tap on it, but it's missing and then it went away. So that's definitely a bug I need to report in the feedback app. And speaking of the feedback app, there doesn't seem to be any major notes this week that are any different. So if we go into feedback, give it a second, go into recent activity, under iOS and iPadOS 18.1 beta five, there are quite a few things that are resolved. There's still some known issues. And if you're having an issue that's not listed here, be sure to report feedback so they can go ahead and fix it. Some of these are pretty major from what I'm hearing from you, but others are having great experiences like me. So just depends on who you are and what your device is set up like, what device you're using and more. Other than that though, battery life, like I said, seems to be improved for me compared to the previous beta. So again, if we go back in battery health, I'm now at six cycles with hundred percent maximum capacity and the last eight days. Well, today I've had four hours and 27 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 47 minutes of screen idle time. And you'll see, I actually used it as a personal hotspot quite a bit. I'm down to 32% and it's holding out just fine. The previous day, 
You'll see it was a little bit less, but it seems to improve over the days and it gets me through a day. This makes me think that this might not be that accurate because I easily get through a day now where I wouldn't be for on the previous betas and on iPhone 15 pro max, I wouldn't get through the day. I'd have to charge before I go to bed or just charge halfway through the day. Now I'm getting through the whole day without a problem. So that could be a combination of the 16 pro max or this together, but either way, it seems to be okay. Most people on the iPhone 16 Pro Max are getting about 9 hours of screen on time or 10 hours on the public version and getting through the day no problem though. When it comes to overall performance, well, I haven't had any issues, but many people have, as I mentioned. So going into maybe podcasts, we'll give it a second. You'll see it loaded pretty fast. Some of this is dependent on the overall speed of your internet, of course. If maybe we go into the camera, which would be important to maybe capture that photo that you're trying to get in time, it seems to work okay. However, depending on the settings you have, you see it takes a little bit longer to actually save. So if we turn that off, snap a photo, it's super fast. As I'm snapping a few photos, if I'm using the maximum settings, well, it's going to process a little bit more. When it comes to performance on older devices, the same thing is true that I mentioned before. It does slow down a little bit on some of them. This one doesn't have an internet connection as we've had a hurricane come through here and I'm using limited connections on my phone and more. So that is using more of my power as well, but either way, they seem to be decent for what they are for betas. Again, we'll have to test this again once we get to the RC. When it comes to overall heat, I have noticed this getting a little bit warmer today, but that might be because I'm using it so much, not having regular internet connections, just using cellular, but let's take a look with the thermal camera. And with 18.1 on the 16 Pro Max, we're at about 37 degrees Celsius. On the 16 Pro Max with iOS 18, we're at about 31.1 degrees Celsius. So 37 degrees, like I mentioned, it did seem a little bit warmer, maybe even 38 degrees in some areas. So it's a little bit warmer than I would expect, but again, it's been a little bit different today. If you do open an Apple intelligence feature, it will heat up pretty quickly. However, with the new iPhone 16s, they do seem to dissipate heat much faster than the previous ones. So I think Apple did a good job here, but they probably still need to optimize Apple intelligence. When it comes to benchmarks, I did run them on the iPhone 16 pro max with 18.1 beta five, uh, let me run them on the others and then we'll check in just a moment. From left to right, we have iOS 18 on the 16 Pro Max, iPhone 11 with iOS 18.1 public beta two and iOS 18.1 beta five on the right with the 16 Pro Max. Pretty great scores overall. This just gives you an idea so you can compare, but with the 16 Pro Max with 18.1 beta five, we have 3,390 for single core, 8,413 for multi-core. It's not an improvement over the previous one, but it's pretty close within about three points or so within the margin of error. So pretty decent overall. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the comments and see what you had to say. Sonic SOGMC said iOS 18.1 public beta two on iPhone 16 pro no issues would like the action button to start stop the media player. I wear made for iPhone hearing aids. So the AirPods tap won't work. I would squeeze the button while it's in my front pocket. I do the same on the right side button to cancel Siri notifications in my ears. Calvin H four six eight two said it's been almost two weeks since I've been using iOS 18 on my iPhone 12 pro max browsing is seamlessly smooth. All apps open and closed with any latency, no network network connectivity issues, no dropped calls, no Bluetooth AirPods Pro 2 connection issues, no overheating issues while charging. Battery health is about the same. Okay. And battery life seems to have improved a little. Bryce Moy 19 said iPhone 15 pro iOS 18.1 dev beta five unbelievable amount of phone crashes and freezes throughout the day. Near the mid afternoon, my phone completely freezes and gets stuck in a loop. I have to manually restart it with the volume buttons. I also keep seeing a create an emoji button, but it has no use. Battery life is somewhat better. Not great. Mackie roll says iOS 18 on iPhone 15 pro max updated a few days ago. Battery life seems to have stayed the same. No bugs that I've noticed. Nocturne S711 said, I just hate the photos redesign. Other than that, it doesn't really feel much different from iOS 17 and 70 people gave it a thumbs up. I see this over and over. Many people really do not like the photos app. George Blair Jr. Said the battery life on the public release of iOS 18 isn't any better than it was on the beta. Otherwise no real bugs for me on my day to day use. Phobes said 15 pro max 18.1 beta five. It has been far buggier than beta four. 
app crashes, iMessage scrolling while typing, internet connection instability. So that's everything with iOS 18 and iOS 18.1 beta 5 or public beta 2. We're really needing an iOS 18 update. By the same time last year, we actually had two public releases to fix a bunch of bugs. We're still not seeing the M4 iPad Pro release for iPad OS 18 for some reason since Apple pulled that, and we definitely need a few bugs to be fixed. But other than that, I think Apple's hard at work at Apple Intelligence, and they're probably really focused on that for some sort of October release. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18 at this point and you haven't yet, I would hold off just a little bit longer until they release maybe iOS 18.0.1, or you could wait till iOS 18.1 for Apple Intelligence. Other than that, though, I would hold off completely on iOS 18.1 betas unless you have a separate phone, as it's not great yet as far as battery life. But other than that, it seems to be fairly stable for about half of the people. So at this point, if you're questioning it, I'd probably just wait until the next rollout of the betas or the public versions. Now, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do for free. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.